Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Grounded video, our first Grounded video of 2022. 2021 is gone. It's in the dust. All the updates we had from Grounded, the Shroom of Doom, Hot and Hazy, it's all old news now. Everybody's looking forward to the next update. Everybody's looking forward to this year. So with that being said, we've got a list of 10 things that I want to see personally with Grounded. So let's get into it. All right, number 10 is going to be tiered zones. Now, the way the game is progressing right now, you can literally just go anywhere and do anything. And a lot of the times, people that jump into the game, they're not going to go where to go, what to do, aside from the uh, first tip of going to Mysterious Machine and then going to the Oak Lab. What I would like to see is insects. They are pretty much in their own area, aside from the larva. Uh, but what I would like to see is the difficulty increase in the insects. So, like, your first insects you're going to see in the Zone 1, so to say, which would be, like, right around the Mysterious Machine right here. You could even put map lines across the map. So zone one would be your weaker insects, your red ants, your uh, your aphids, your gnats, your weevils, maybe even larva if you want to put those in there. I'm fine with larva being everywhere, but I think the difficulty should increase the more you progress through the games. So another thing I want to see with that is each zone prepping you for the next zone. So in tier or zone one, you would get stuff that you would might necessarily need to go into uh, zone two. And then zone two would prep you with the equipment and weapons, the tools and armor and everything you need to go to zone three, whether it be the hage or the hedge, uh, hedge area, or whatever else. So that's number 10 on our list. Let's jump over to number 9. All right, so for number 9, what I want to look at is the quests given to us by our man Burgo here. And I would like them to show story progression. So the first quest we should get should not be the candy conundrum chip or, you know, to go over to the Black Ant Hill or the picnic table or something like that. It needs to show progression as in we get the Oak Lab chip. Okay, now head over to the Red Ant Hill. Now go to the Koi Pond. Now go to the Hedge. Something like that that shows the progression rather than just sending you across the map in these different areas that you might not be prepared for. And along with that... It's good to see you again. Good to see you, Burgle. Another thing is these quests right here. You're telling me I have to go spend my time to kill five gnats to get 75 raw science. These quests need to go away because right now at this point in the game, I can go kill these gnats in 10 seconds. Is that really worth the 75 raw science? No. So I'm going to skip that one. But now I have to wait a whole nother day just to get this raw science. So along with progression quests in terms of the chips and the labs, what I also want to see is quests that are going to be actually rewarding. So if we go do something, if we go kill so many red ants or something like that, give us the red ant club. If we go kill five wolf spiders or something like that, give us a spider fang dagger, give us a piece of the spider armor, something like that that's going to reward the player for actually going out and doing these things. So that's one thing I want to see with the quests in terms of uh, Berg. A little bit of story progression and more rewarding quests in general. So with that being said, let's jump to number eight. All right, so here we are with number eight. Number eight, what I want to see is a more accurate and up-to-date OS here, our operating system. So a lot of the stuff with the Hot and Hazy update, even going back to the Shroom and Doom update, some of the stuff isn't as accurate, and it doesn't give us the information that we need, especially for newer players. You're going to see all these set bonuses here for the armor, and they don't really know what that means. They're going to have to do some research or go on YouTube, like right here, and watch these videos to see, well, what does Humant mean? Okay, Red Ant CU is one of them. What does that mean? Fuzzy Cushion, lands with a softness. Does that mean I take no damage? How high? What's the height? Do I take some damage? A lot of damage? Hunter's prowess, recycles energy with increased efficiency. What does that mean? Energy, where's our energy? I don't see energy. I see stamina. Those are just a few examples of that stuff. And a lot of the stuff for the set bonuses for the armor isn't accurate, like I said. And then some of these things too, like give us actual numbers. Haul more items. How much more? How many more items can we haul? Sizzle protection. Slows the rate at which the sizzle boils your insides. What's the rate? 10%, 20%, 70%? We don't know. So an updated operating system here that gives us the information that we need, especially for newer players. And if you guys are kind of seeing this theme here of more uh, player advancement, player necessity, I guess is what you want to say. I don't know if that's the right word, but to make it a little bit more easier for the player to get into the game without having to do so much research. You should be able to just hop in and get the information you need instead of having to go on YouTube or go on the internet, wherever else, Google and search for something just to get an answer like fuller, stay full longer. Well, how much fuller? How much longer? You know, stuff like that. So that's going to be one thing that I think. And if you guys are going to see this list, like I said, a lot of it is going to be more catered to the player. We, we know we're going to get the new insects. We know we're going to get new weapons. We know we're going to get new areas, new labs, all that stuff. So I know we're going to see that stuff. So I'm not going to say I want to see these insects or stuff like that because I know we're going to get that stuff. So moving along, we're going to head into number seven here. All right, so jumping back in here at number seven, you see we're on the recipe page. Now, this page frustrates me. 
And I've played, I've got over like five, 600 hours in this game. So I can only imagine what it's like for a newer player. Because I remember when I was new, I didn't know what I was doing. The recipe uh, bank, so to say. So we don't even know what is labeled as what. We know melee. Okay, these are all melee weapons. But why can't we break it down a step further and say clubs, uh, swords, spears, daggers, stuff like that, you know? Okay, are these weapons or are these tools? We know they're tools, but a newer player is not going to know that. Ranged. Okay, we got all that. That makes sense. Explosive. Wait, are these all tools or weapons? Because now we have torches next to a repair tool. Decoit bait. Missile. What is... You know, see what I'm saying? So label it weapons, label it armor, label it tools, label it miscellaneous like your basketball hoop, your bounce web, your decoy bait, that kind of stuff. And I think we go over here. Where is it? Why is the Broodmother BLT under the cross? The cross to me means like health, something like that. Shinobi Sneeze, Broodmother BLT. Shouldn't this be classified as like a weapon, like a support weapon or something like that? Broodmother BLT boss items. Okay, so it just needs to be broken down. I'd like to see it at the top right up here to where it's like weapons, armor, uh, food and drink. We see the building and stuff here, but even this, we have drink under building. Okay, we're building something to drink. Drink, sleep, food, production, storage, traps, navigation. A ladder is navigation? Hmm, okay. You know, stuff like that. It's just... It's all messy. I just want it more uniformed. And maybe that's me with my OCD, but I like to be able to know where things are so I can find them quicker. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to number six. All right, number six is going to be a little pet peeve of mine. I'm sure it might be one of your guys' too, but when I've been playing this game as long as I have, I've got boxes full of everything. Yeah, they're nice and labeled, but when you get in here, without me doing this by myself, this is just going to be a mess. So when somebody's trying to search for something like that, where is it? Now I gotta sit here and go through my whole inventory to try to find stuff. Give us an option to auto sort our inventory, our storage, even our inventory right here. Give us an option just to press one button to where it puts everything where it goes. Now, personally like this, make it an optional function. It doesn't have to be something that you use all the time because I like setting mine up like this, you know, weapons, food, health, and then everything else goes over here. But just give us that option of auto sorting our inventory. A lot of players have been playing this game from the beginning and they got to sit here and do all this by themselves. And it's kind of frustrating. It just takes up too much time. And it takes that time away from us actually playing the game and enjoying it. All right, so that's my pet peeve right there. Let's jump into number five. Number five, we're back here with the inventory slot. Look at all this extra space. We've got one, two, three. We've got, what, 30 slots here? We could potentially have 60. Going back to the Burgle Quest. Let us either craft a new backpack or go, you know, buy a new backpack uh, recipe or something like that from Burgle to increase these extra slots. Let us use the milk molars to increase our inventory slot, not just the resource size limit, the consumable size limit. Let us actually unlock another 10 slots, another 10 here, another 10 here. Give us that inventory. There's so many resources that you're gathering from each insect that you kill, or even just running around when you're gathering stuff to build. We need that extra space. We don't need the increased resource numbers. We need the increased inventory space. All right, with that being said, there's another pet peeve. I know we're kind of getting negative here, but trust me, a lot of this I think would definitely help the player enjoy the game a little bit more. So moving on, we're gonna go to number four. All right, so now we're on to the milk molars, which is the great a great idea. I love the fact that we are able to customize our character a little bit more uh, to increase what we need for the situation at hand. But that's the problem right now, is that once you set these, they're done, they're set in stone. There's no way to reset them. So what I propose, what I wanna see in 2022, is the ability to reset this now make us do a quest or make us pay a certain amount of raw science to either reset all of them or just reset one of them let me reset you know five points ten points something like that i'll pay the raw science raw science isn't an issue to come by so let us respec or reset all of the uh different milk molar options that we have because sometimes you'll fat finger it or sometimes it'll be sound like a good idea at the time and then when you go back after playing with that one for a while you're like man i really wish i would have put this extra one here so give us that opportunity to reset the milk molar so we can customize it based on where we're going or what we're doing in the game. All right, so we're moving right along. We're going to head into number three. All right, so into number three, it's not something that's that much of a big pet peeve for me, but going on the Reddit and talking to people, seeing it in the uh, discussion boards and stuff like that online, 
let's get us a solid fixed multiplayer so it actually works. You've got four different pl players that you can play with co-op right now, but the issue is it just runs like crap. And I hate to, I'm not being negative, I'm not putting that, putting down Obsidian or the team at Grounded and everything. I love this game, but the multiplayer really needs some work. There's a lot of games out there that have multiplayer and they work pretty much seamlessly, depending on your internet and your location and stuff like that. So let's get that fixed. And jumping into number two, we're going to say, let us transfer our own stuff to somebody else's world. There's nothing more annoying than when you jump into somebody else's world, they've got this big, vast area. they got all the tools, all the armor, all the weapons and everything like that. And you have to go use their stuff. Let me let me bring my stuff over. Give me a bag, give me a chest or something like that, and let me bring all that stuff over. Now, the only issue with that I can see is that, okay, what happens when you die or when that breaks or something like that? What happens if you get disconnected? Does that stuff just go? Does it get lost in the ether? Who knows? That's something for them to figure out, but I think it would be a lot more, uh, again, player-friendly if you were able to jump into your player's world with the gear that you already have. All right, so getting into it now, we're getting real close here. Let's jump straight into number one. Number one is going to be a finished product. Now, I'm not saying it has to be polished. I know there's still going to be some kinks and bugs and everything to work out, but I think by the end of 22, that gives us what? The rest of this year. You've got basically three to four updates this year that they're talking about doing. I think there's definite possibility that we can see everything done. All of this area filled in. We know the shed's coming next. We know the termites. This area over here and then just above the pond is basically it. I think we see a complete finished product. That means story, all the weapons, insects, tools, crafting, everything done in 2022. So they're just the 10 of the things that I really want to see in Grounded in 2022. Like I said, I know we're going to see the new insects. We're going to see... A lot of different weapons, armor, tools, everything like that. But these are the 10 things that I want to see in 2022 for Grounded. What do you guys think? Agree with me? Disagree? Let me know in the comments below. That's all we got for this video, guys. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Love to see you guys join the uh, original community in 2022. So we'll see you guys in the next video. Stay original, my friends. Later.